Good evening everyone, this evening we're in Hebrews chapter 2, the reading is verses 1 to 9. I'm just going to read the first four verses to you. We must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. For since the message spoken through angels was binding, and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment, how shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God also testified to it by signs, wonders, and various miracles, and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. Well, we see here the uh, writer to the Hebrews is just painting a picture of how great the salvation is and the fact that it was declared by the Lord and confirmed by the apostles with signs and wonders and miracles. Just notice that verse 4 is in the past tense. God also testified, past tense to it, by signs, wonders and various miracles and by gifts of the Spirit distributed, past tense, according to his will. So it, that, that fourth verse there is speaking about the early days of the church and the signs and wonders performed by the apostles and indeed by the Lord himself. Jesus said at one stage, if you can't believe my, wor my words, believe me for the works sake. But returning to the core of this passage, this reminds us, I think, of that parable Jesus told of the owner of a vineyard who put tenants in charge. And then he sent along various servants who they chased away and beat. And then he sent his son who they killed. How could they escape after turning or chasing away his servants? Surely eventually the owner of the vineyard would have got annoyed and would have brought the courts and the authorities into play. But how could they, so there was little chance of escaping when it was just his servants he was sending. But when he sent his son, surely there was no chance to escape when they rejected him. And here's the great message for us. We may hear human testimony, but we look at Jesus and we see how great this salvation is. Jesus himself came from heaven's glory and declared the gospel to us. We see it was confirmed by signs and wonders in his ministry and in the ministries of those who knew him. How can we escape if we neglect or ignore so great a salvation? And notice as well that this is written to believers. We must pay care, the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard. Why? So that we do not drift away. Often that verse, how shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation, is used in a gospel presentation to those who have never responded to the gospel. But its original context is to those who were already believers. And the idea is that we look at how great the gospel is. We continually remind ourselves of the gospel message. We pay careful attention to what we've heard and who we heard it from so that we do not drift away. It's easy to become complacent about the gospel message, but we must pay careful attention that we don't drift away. This is a great salvation, a glorious salvation. Uh, God purposed to reveal it to us through his Son and confirm it by the Holy Spirit. Let's not neglect it, but let's stir up that which is within us that we may fully live. In, to glorify him. Uh, Father, we thank you that in your love and mercy you revealed a great salvation to us. In olden times it was revealed by angelic messengers and by prophets uh, and by holy men. But in these days you have spoken to us by your Son, the Lord Jesus. You have confirmed the message through the Holy Spirit. And Lord, we pray that we will never take lightly the message of salvation, nor our own salvation, but will daily, regularly, 
uh, pay attention and stir up our faith, rejoicing that we are amongst those who you have chosen and called through your Son, the Lord Jesus. Amen. <laughs>